Well, this is the exit interview. Niski is no longer going to be part of the LCS. He's abandoned us for uh, someplace in Europe, I guess. Anyway, uh, let me just... Yep, okay. Everything looks good on my end. And we're going to keep talking. I'm just... Uh, just testing something really quickly. Niski, how, um, how's this been, this offseason? Because it's got to have been maybe a little wild for you. I assume you did not know you were headed to Europe a couple of months ago. Yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, I didn't know um, that I would go back to Europe. Um, like, I didn't even know that like, my Fnatic would be an option in the beginning. I didn't know that I would leave C9 till uh, Jack told me that they were looking at mids. Or most likely perks, right? Um, I was like, okay. And then I went into my options, and Fnatic was the, I guess, the best one, and the one that I really wanted to, because they had the best roster uh, on the paper. So I was like, sure. Um, NA or EU, I don't really care. Uh, I just want a good roster and somewhere where I fit, and that's and somewhere where they actually want to win, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, it was just an easy choice for me to make. Well, I want to get more into sort of like the stages of how that all went down. But before that, I'd love to just kind of talk to you about your time in the LCS, specifically starting with your return with Cloud9, because I know you've been here before. But, um, you know, what what were your expectations, if you can think back that far, for when you first came over and joining Cloud9? And how, how did this all kind of go over? Because you were replacing Jensen, who obviously was a player that a lot of people in North America had a high opinion of. So what were kind of your early expectations and hopes for coming to LCS and what you could accomplish? Um, I mean, first of all, I knew that if I went to NA, I could, or even back in EU, to be honest, I thought I could be a top mid. Um, at the end of Splice, I think I was top three because we finished uh, summer, I think, third place. Um, but then I was like, okay, if I go to NA um, in C9, I feel like I can win the split. And to win the split, of course, I need to be the, the best mid, right? Uh, to have the higher chance to win it. And then, yeah, that was my first objective, kind of become the best there. Um, alongside, of course, there was also uh, Jensen and Bjergsen, which uh, I respected a lot and I still respect. So I was like, yeah, I want to become uh, NA, NA's best mid and then we'll see where it, go from, where it goes from there. And yeah, the first year went decent, I think, for me. Um, even though we kind of crashed at the Worlds, but um, we're just worse as a team i think and also like just uh, in general individually so yeah um and so i mean that that first year you said you know didn't didn't go so well at worlds but what how how did the experience of being c9 on c9 in that first year meet your expectations i mean did you exceed it did you do you think it was okay i mean i what what do you think of that year um i think to be honest for my first year i think i did a decent job where as you could see, the most of the games we won were mostly through mid jungle. Uh, if I may say it, like through me and Zanskar and just um, just going all in, right? Uh, like playing Ariel Sidrani, uh, all that kind of stuff. And it was the first time that I was kind of on a first, how do I say, on like a top team, right? Um, so you know, it was my top team, uh, and then I knew how to perform. I had the the pressure to perform as well, which I actually quite like. Um, because it makes me try hard more, you know, it makes me perform better, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of my uh, my experience. And then, yeah, I think 2019, to be honest, personally was um, kind of a success for myself just because I proved that I was one of the best mids uh, in NA. And then I, I wasn't sure what to expect internationally, to be honest. So I just, I just went there and tried my best, but it didn't work out. So I knew I had to change some stuff for the next year and... Uh, and I did so. Yeah. Do you think 2019 was kind of a breakout year for you? Because obviously people knew about you. You'd been around before, but I, I think a lot of people didn't know what to expect when you joined C9. So do you think that that was sort of like a, a at least up until then? And we'll talk about 2020 in a second. But do you think 2019 was like your bet the best year of your career you'd had until then? Um, I think probably the year where I learned the most and when I grew the most. Um. I don't know if it was necessarily my best year because I think um, my splice summer split was decent as well. Um, but definitely, I think the, where I learned the most and I kind of grew up as a player was definitely 2019 in C9 because, I mean, Worlds was just um, such an experience for me where I improved so much from it, right? Um, 
so yeah, I'm I'm really glad that I got that experience, and um, in the future if I succeed, I'm pretty sure it will also be because of a uh, because of that year for sure. Yeah. What uh, was playing with Sven Skarin like compared to some of your other junglers? Because uh, I want to ask about both him and Blabber, but mm-hmm. I mean, you've you've obviously played with a lot of different teams and rosters now. So, uh, c- given that you felt like so much of the success that year was through mid and jungle, what what was the experience of playing like with him like? Um, I mean, me and Sven Skarin talked a lot back in C nine. Um, I remember it didn't go well, right? Um, at one point in two thousand nineteen, I don't remember what time, but at do believe we were losing some games um, at one point, and I remember I was talking to him. I was like, "Okay, like, what can we change um, so that we can improve, right? So that we can actually win games." And the solution he brought to me was just pick a p- pushing mid or something that can fight, and you have mechanics, so we would just kind of abuse that, I guess, and just play as a duo. Um, and that's when I think I started playing like Aurelia, uh, Talia, like just ca- casually pushing mids, right? Um, and then that's how he kind of taught me, or like implemented me in his uh, in his playstyle, right? Where I would kind of would kind of do stuff together, no matter what. And then it just went better from there. So that's when I actually realized that like mid jungle is actually just like one role in 2019. Um, and yeah, I think Zanskern helped me a lot. Also, just his way of like uh, the atmosphere he's in, uh, his work ethic, all that is really. Um, it's something I really respect because he plays a lot of solo queue, um, always tries hard, stuff like that. So I try to kind of mimic that in the future as well, um, like this year, for example. And yeah, I mean, he, he taught me a lot and I really respect him still. So Yeah. So then in 2020, uh, the roster changed again and Blabber ended up uh, playing with you. Uh, what do you think of 2020? Because this year I feel like it's got to be both Maybe one of the best and one of the worst years of your career. Uh, not even because of you personally, but just how things went down with Cloud9. Um, let's say <laughs> half 2020 was was one of the worst and then the other half was one of the best. Um, I mean, to be honest, after 2019, uh, I was really confident that going to 2020, I would be the best mid in NA just because of the experience I got at the Worlds. Um, and how like I was changing everything I do, how, how I think about the game and all that. Um, and then, yeah, spring worked really well. Um, I feel like I was on the same page with everyone. Everything was great. Uh, me and Blab were still, I mean, I was like the best ju- mid jungle, the one could contest us. And then sadly when summer hit, um, some bad stuff happened. Uh, we kind of lost um, faith in each other. It's like, um, kind of collapsed, I guess, in a way. I don't think it's like one guy's fault. Uh, one guy's fault. Uh, p- uh, personally, I think just as a group, we we collapsed, and then also um, our coaching staff, I'd say, were not uh, that helpful in that regard. Um, even though, like, it has to come from the players, right, to fix things first, um, which I'd say didn't happen, sadly. Um, but yeah, I think we all. We're all sad because I'm pretty sure we could have done so much more if we just realized uh, earlier that we were actually just a bad team, right? Uh, even when we're like winning against everyone, and yeah, also like the like the scrim results and everything, but yeah, were so weird because we were winning scrims and like we we're just getting stomped on stage, or like we we're losing scrims and we we're winning on stage, and like uh, it was like two different metas. Uh, some teams, as I said, kind of didn't scrim us. So I was like, okay, but you know, we're not even that good anymore, right? Uh, we actually need some scrims. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it was just so weird. And then like COVID situation happened. So I was like, okay, whatever. Um, I, I guess this year just has to be like this, right? Um, which really sucked. I don't know. So, I mean, one thing that's um, really unlucky and sad, I think, was just MSI. Yeah. Um, I feel like if it happened, then we'd realize much earlier that we were just a bad team maybe, or maybe we'd just perform better because we were even tried more, right? Um, but yeah, I don't know, it was just a really weird year for me and just a, a sad one uh, towards the end. But yeah, it, it just happens and uh, I would just take it as an experience, I guess. You mentioned uh, that the coaching staff wasn't able to really help turn things around. Was that just, you know, was it you guys were looking for answers as to why you guys were losing and they didn't have them? Or was it like a failure to implement changes into the practice routine? I mean, what 
what do you think uh, did not, where do you think that the, uh, the mistake was made? Um, I mean, I'd say in summer split, um, the, I mean, even in spring when we were like mostly winning, um, I mean, as everyone knows, it's mostly from the players, right? The coaches are just kind of there to like facilitate, um, conversation, stuff like that. But in summer, the issue is that no one really knew how to win the game anymore uh, in our team or like how we, how we're even strong, right? At one point, I remember us talking about just going back to like what we were playing in spring, just like bring Rumble mid, um, like Gali, stuff like that, just so that we could actually play the game and actually win that way. But, um, like the meta changed and we had to adapt, but I think we just realized too late. Uh, I knew that, for example, I had to play more control majors, right? But none of my teammates thought it was the right way to play the game. And then my coaching staff didn't necessarily um, look at like other regions and like tell me, look, I think this is good. I remember one time I was like, guys, everyone's first picking Oriana. I think it's pretty good. Um, LSE, LPL, even LCK. And when you're like teammates or telling you, no, nah, I don't think it's good, then you're like, okay, then you know, you, you don't even, what do I say, like, want to try, right? Um, so I kind of give up on like the majors and I still try to do my best to kind of find a fit so that we could win games. But towards the end, I, even myself didn't know how to win games because um, everyone, <laughs> everyone was so, I think, kind of stressed and just, um, how can I say, like lost in a way. Yeah. Just because like COVID, uh, the scrim results, and then uh, like we had bad performances after having a great spring uh, spring split, right? Um, so it was just a mix of weird weird shit happening, and yeah, it just collapsed at the end, which I couldn't believe it. I thought we'd make it to Worlds, even if we were like really bad, but yeah, uh, towards the end we were just um, I'd say all uh, not on the same page at all. And then I mean, anyways, if if your if your if your team is not on the same page, then there is no reason of you going uh, to international event anyway. So at the end, I just accepted it. And after we lost, it was sad, but I realized that we fucked up even way before uh, it happened. So, yeah. So immediately afterwards, there was that statement that Jack put out that was like, Hey, we're not making any changes. Um, and so what, what was it? Was it just sort of a thing where you guys all talked and said, Hey, maybe, you know, we, we believe in these players. Maybe we need coaching staff changes and we'll be able to turn it around next year. Or like what was at that point in time, the thing that had led to that, or was it just kind of like Jack coming down and saying like, I believe in you guys. We're, we're keeping all five. Um, I mean, Jack, Jack I mean, as of every off season, um, you kind of tell your CEO or your managers or whatever, um, what you think should change. If there's anything to change, I told Jack, I think the five players are great. Um, spring worked, well, worked out well. Uh, we could have done much more, in my opinion, this year. It just happened that it sucked. Um, and I thought that the coaching staff had to do more in summer to kind of help us help us um, realize that uh, our meta was not right and that we had to practice new champions or other champions, other play styles, um, kind of guide us right in a way. And yeah, I made him, I told Jack, I think, if we do again another year like this, um, I'm pretty sure we, I'm confident that it will work. Um, just because everyone saw how we failed in summer and everyone was like kind of angry and wanted to come back stronger, right? Um, I felt like if we stay together, then we probably would be a really good team, right? I don't see any reason why not. Um, then, yeah, we, we all agreed. Everyone was fine with it. Um, I even talked to every player, like if they had any issues with others, others and we're on the same page. So I was like, okay, I mean, I'm down to try it another year because I think it was just kind of sad and unlucky, I guess, towards the end that it didn't work out. So, yeah, that's the feedback I gave. And I guess that's kind of what um, everyone gave before the the OCNU new, uh, news Change came in, you. I guess. Well, before I, I talk about or ask you about the transition, I do want to go back because we talked about Sven Skarin. Over the course of 2020, obviously you guys had, especially in the beginning, a very dominant time before the unfortunate collapse at the end. What was playing with Blabber like? Because a lot of people pointed out, obviously, the MVPs of Svenskeren and then Blabber, and people were like, hmm, what is the common uh, thread between these two players? So, you know, what was that experience like, and how different was it from the Svenskeren time? Or was it taking a lot of what you learned from Svenskeren and implementing it into 
um, this new situation? Um, I mean, first of all, I think just the experience I got from Svetskaren, I kind of put it into blabber, <laughs> where, you know, I, I learned from Svetskaren and then blabber also learned from Svetskaren back then. Um, and then we kind of both talked about the game and how the game should be played, and we both agreed in the same way, where um, if one of them can get ahead, then the other one sh should kind of sack camps or minions or whatever, right? Um, then, for example, if I move, uh, then he takes my waves. If he ganks, then I take his camps, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I'd say, yeah, I think it's mostly, mostly Van Skern. And then also um, FPX in 2019 after Worlds, where I was like, okay, blah, blah, I want to play like this because it seems fun. It seems like our play style. Um, I think we can do it. And then that's why, like, I started doing timers because we started playing around them. Um, like all that kind of stuff, which helped us succeed, I'd say, as well uh, in spring. So yeah, I think that's that's the the takeaway. And then I also knew that um, Blaber was not necessarily the, the tank player um, for what he's known, right? Uh, he only plays carries. Uh, he shines on them usually. So I was like, I mean, I don't mind, right? If we win like this, then why wouldn't I play it this, this way? Um, but then. I mean, sadly, it didn't work out in summer, and then it just collapsed, so. Yeah. One second, let me turn this light on. Okay, okay. It's starting to get dark here. Um, okay, so I remember doing interviews with you uh, around MSI and other players, and I was like, hey, do you think you guys can take G2? And, like, everybody's kind of coy around those times, right? Because... Um, you know, you don't want to like over speak or, you know, promise something that can't happen. But now that time has passed and, you know, cloud nine, that cloud nine is no more. What was actually the conversations that you guys had, if any, about like how good you thought you guys were potentially on the world stage and how well you'd be able to do against G2 or other top teams from other regions? I mean, for me, I really like to be humble, usually, to be honest, when it comes to, um, like predictions or how we will do against other teams just because after 2019 uh, internationally I thought it would match against some teams at least challenge them and then we got smashed um, so in my head I knew that at least we could compete against them um, I don't think it would be <laughs> as easy as some people were saying or I don't know if even people were thinking that we could beat them but um, playing against G2 or TSM or TL is not the same uh, level, uh, if I may say, because, I mean, first of all, I think playing against G2, for example, their mid-jungle <laughs> would not be as easy as playing against the others, because in NA, just to be frank, I think, except um, TSM, like with Bjorg and Spica, um, every mid-jungle was kind of playing on their own, uh, so it was kind of easy to abuse it. Um, and actually, there was also some turn in um, NP Vegas that worked well together as well, but, but yeah, I mean, I wasn't really thinking too much about it. I was mostly focused on my season. Um, but yeah, it'd be... I'd love, or like I would have loved to to kind of play against it, just to actually see, you know, if we actually had a chance, I believe we'd do, uh, would have, because we had such a good play style and it never failed. Um, so I was like, if it fails, good, because we'd learn. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't fail, then I mean, it means that it actually works, right, what we're doing, um, that we're right from the beginning. So, yeah. Yeah, that's unfortunate to uh, that we'll never know, I guess. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people would say one way or the other what would happen, but um, we'll, we'll never truly know. Uh, all right, so anyway, kind of going back to the uh, stuff we were talking about earlier, you uh, had initially said and the team initially thought that it was going to be these five players, and then the OCE stuff changes, and it's like, okay, well, maybe this is going to be fudge. At the time, did you know that, that your are opportunity was potentially not going to be there uh, because I remember during worlds even hearing like even while G2 was on the tournament mm -hmm. perks is possibly joining C9 mm -hmm. it was like this crazy rumor nobody could believe um, so at what point in time did you start to realize like oh maybe it's not gonna be the five players and also maybe I'm not going to be on this team um, I mean I was, I was hearing rumors about it but I, I didn't necessarily get anything official till 
I think, wait, what time? We're in December, I think, probably early November or something. Yeah. Because um, um, one of the things that happened during the season that people know probably is like the, the Pathfox thing, right? Uh, Pathfox would replace me, blah, blah. Um, but the story is that he just wanted a tryout. Um, and then Jack gave it to him just because, I mean, it's normal, right? Someone wants to try a uh, tryout against me. But the issue is that we couldn't like boot camp, stuff like that. So I went to Korea with Blabber. Um, and I mean, at this date, I don't know if they would keep me or Parfox, but uh, I have my guess, right? Um, but yeah, at the end, he told me that he would go for perks. And I was like, sure, um, I don't mind, you know. Um, I was talking to every player, thinking of their... I was asking their opinion on it. Um, when I when I got the perks news that like they would go for perks, I was like, okay, uh, that's fair. Um, I'm fine, you know, with it. Uh, then I mean, Jack was really helpful with it, which I really appreciate because he told me from the beginning, look, Niski, we're looking to perks, um, so I will let you talk to like other teams, um, stuff like that. Like on the tent, I would make my choice um, so that you don't lose time. Blah blah, right? Um, and then yeah, I started to talk to teams, and I was also in the the process of getting my green card this year. Um, that I kind of gave up because I went back to EU, right? Yeah. Um, that was at like a, a choice I had to make. I was like, well, the green card is nice, but I want to win, so <laughs> I'm going to to Fnatic. Um, so yeah, that's that, that's basically how it went, and. Jack was really nice with it. He told, he literally told me, just tell me whatever team you want to go to, and I will make it happen. And I was like, okay, I, I want to go Fnatic, and he just made it happen. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm glad it uh, it went smoothly. But of course, it was really stressful because like every day I had to t- I had to like talk to this guy. Okay, what are you doing? Okay, what is this guy doing? Right? Because um, uh, I needed to know, for example, if Santorin was going to TL, right? Because uh, if he isn't, then I can maybe make maybe make a less super team in a name with him. Uh, right. stuff like that um so yeah all those days i couldn't play i couldn't um even like my sleep thing was fucked because like na timing and like uh, calls meetings all oh, that yeah because you're in europe at this point as yeah all i was this in europe happening. so you're staying up for those weird hours yeah yeah and yeah basically it was a stressful one but once i made the FNAG decision i was happy with it and i was confident and yeah you was there any point in time where you were concerned? Because obviously we don't, I think at the time, know how many of these like veteran players would not be starting this year or perhaps are on teams that they didn't expect. Like there was just so much volatility and so many players ended up in different places. Were you ever like nervous about like, wait, am I, am I sure I'm going to end up on a team next year? Or am I sure I'm going to end up on a good team next year? Like, you know, was any of this going on in your mind? Um, I mean, that was for sure something um that i didn't want to happen where i had to go to a team that was already done just because i was late um so that's why i tell jack that i wanted to talk to everyone kind of just to tell them my plans right and if someone could make a super team then sure um i'd have a higher chance to join them right um but i'd say it didn't necessarily happen uh this off season so i was like um Flatex is already a mid team and i mean they were already really they were really interesting for me from the beginning. It was just a matter of, do I want to give up my green card? Do I want to uh, go back to EU? Stuff like that. Um, and then I just decided to just come back to EU. Uh, and yeah, of course, I've had moments where I was like, hmm, maybe I should just stay to in NA, right? Because that's where I was in the last two years. Um, and that's maybe where I can actually just challenge C9 too. <laughs> but <laughs> I was like, nah, it's fine. I will, uh, I will get to Fnatic because it's a... Uh, you like the you don't um like people don't know it but like two years ago when i was after splice uh, i wanted to kind of stay in europe and like i've had the fanatic um, i was close of joining fanatic but it, it kind of was out of my hands if i may say uh, so it didn't happen and then yeah that's why i went to na in the first place right um and when people are like talking like, oh, you goes to NA after the EU just to cash out, stuff like that. Like, uh, like these things are like so untrue because I just went there because they were, the, they, it was the better team for me to, to go, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't have necessarily that many um, top teams choices because, uh, you know? Um, so yeah, that, that, that's basically how it went. 
How did how did the fanatic conversation start? Because you said you told Jack. He's at any team. Uh, I assume you couldn't have been like G two Jack. Get me there. Get caps out. I'll take that spot. We're gonna win. Uh, I mean, so how how did the fanatic? Did you know at the time that they were potentially interested, or I mean, how did that that happen? Especially because there's been all this conversation since then about Reckless supposedly saying that mm-hmm. he really wanted you on the team and that type of stuff. No, I mean it was like everything right was. I've, I was just talking to to the teams that were interesting to me, and Fnatic was one of them. Uh, and yeah, it just happened naturally, right? Um, like I'm out of the table for C9, or I might be if Perks like joins, right? Um, which I guess was high likely. But I was like, okay, I will, I will just leave. And, uh, and Fnatic was there. I had, I of course, had some NA offers, but. Fnatic happened naturally. I felt comfortable with them. And also, I wanted to join two years ago. Didn't happen. And this year, it can happen. So I was like, okay. Um, I like the York. I like the people that are there. Um, so yeah, I, I like what they stand for. So I was like, I would just go there, right? Um, and then coming back to you is also kind of a challenge uh, just to see how I will match against other players. So it, it was kind of an easy, not an easy choice, but um, an obvious one, if I may say. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's uh, because this is the the exit interview for LCS. Let's mm-hmm. talk a little bit about LCS. Um, one, it sounded like you didn't even want to come over here two years ago. You didn't oh, have a choice. Just... That's what you were. It sounds like you were saying. So, um, I mean, what is that? When you ended up over here, were you just like, ah, oh, well, I guess it's North America? Or are you like, whatever, I'll go back? No, I mean the thing is that I, at least myself as a player, I really don't care if I play in any or EU. Um, because at the end, you want to be the better, you want to be the best at your job, and you want to be the the best player in the region, no matter where you are, right? Um, and then also, I went to NA before, so I was like, NA. I mean, it doesn't necessarily scare me to go to NA by myself, um, kind of live there, right? Because I did it before, like three years ago in NV, uh, or two years ago, I don't remember. But yeah, it didn't scare me at all. And also, I like challenge and like replacing Jensen's. Uh, shoes I guess was something I was excited about as well um, as much as I think it was replacing Caps shoes in Fnatic unless I'm wrong um, two years ago yeah, yeah I think it, it sure. would have been right or no a little bit before so, yeah whatever yeah I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was Caps uh, that's the year he went to G2 I think yes yeah right yes um, so I was like you know uh, why not and yeah I mean of course as a European player, you always want to stay, or at least I wanted to stay home just because I did NA in Envy, didn't necessarily go well. Um, and I was like, I want to stay in EU, um, oh, like uh, close to my family, my friends, stuff like that. And then, you know, when it doesn't happen, you look for. Um, I was lucky that I had C9, I think, at that point as well. Uh, that they were handed there to like save me, I guess, uh, yeah. in a way where she, I was like, oh my God, I actually have C9, you know? Um, and then, yeah, Jack just told me like, okay, we want you, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, let's make it. It was literally like, it, it was that easy, you know? It was like, do you want to join? I was like, yes. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and we just made it happen. Cause I mean, I, enjoy, I really enjoyed talking to Jack and I think he enjoyed talking to me too, right? Uh, he knew, like I told him like, okay, I'm going to come to an A and, um, like I promise you, I will win you a title in the next two years. Because he told me, man, like we we didn't win, right? I was like, okay, I will I will win you one. Um, and then yeah, I'm glad that I, at least I, I kept that promise. Yeah. Were you? <sighs> I I don't know. Are you happy reflecting on your time in North America? Do you feel like you achieved what you wanted to achieve, or uh, is was this year and sort of the unfortunate end to it? something where it doesn't feel like you were able to to do what you would like to have done here? Um, I think the ending is kind of sad just because people probably just remember us like, uh, or like NA people, I guess, probably remember us like oh, the fourth best NA mid or whatever, just because C9 collapsed, right? Um, which is something I didn't want to, I don't want to be remembered of, right? Um, for me, I know I'm a top mid, I'm not scared to say it because, I mean, I'm confident that I am. And it just happened that it sucked. Uh, like, C9 just, uh, like, we just sucked as a team in summer. And, yeah, for me, I'm just excited 
uh, about my future. And then also I know that a lot of people actually understand that when a team collapses, everyone looks bad. Uh, that's just how it is. That's just how League of Legends works. And especially, I'd say, with the place that I had where <laughs> I was just sacking, I was just kind of playing to get hours ahead. But then when it doesn't work, then it looks even worse. Um, so, yeah, I think I'd say... I think people know me now, like my personality, all that stuff, um, which I really uh, appreciate about people because in the beginning, no one really know me. Uh, and then now I think people figured me out, right? Um, I'm that guy that comes and like has fun, has fun um, just brings his teammates up. It just has always positive vibes, right? Um, and I think that's what I would probably rem be remembered of. And then 2020 spring, people will probably forget about it just because that spring split doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Um, so, which is kind of sad, but yeah. And then also, I mean, it, with this COVID thing, it's it's just so, I don't know, this year has been really, really weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, for everyone, I'm sure. Uh, but definitely, I'm, I'm sure given how everything went for Cloud9, do you, uh, would, would you ever come back to North America? Like at this point in time, you say you don't really mind which region you play in as long as you're on whatever the best team you can get on is. So uh, is there a world where you ping pong back and forth or when you left or a as you, you decided to stay with Fnatic or go to Fnatic, are you like, yeah, this is probably no more North America. It's over. Um, I mean, never say never, right? Um, I think if in, uh, in some years I am like, a, I don't know, like maybe my contract is done or uh, I would just feel like I want to go to NA or I feel like maybe there's a super team that creates in NA where uh, they want me or something like that. I I'd go, right? Um, I, as I said, I don't really care being in NA or EU as long as my team is good. Um, so yeah, if if in some years um, there's a good team in NA, why not? Yeah. Uh, but in the next years, I'll be in Fnatic and we'll try to beat uh, G2 here. <laughs> New challenges, I'm sure. I'm sure. Do you... Um... I guess because you're leaving, I can I mm -hmm. can ask this and hopefully get a, a just a straightforward answer. Do you think North America will ever be competitive internationally, or at least I mean we've we've shown competition before, made it to finals and stuff. But like, do you think that there's a world where we'll ever win an MSI or a world or just really show up? Hmm. Because you know all the systemic issues here, right? You've played through yes. them all, like solo queue and teams and hmm. other talent and that. Maybe with the new players that are going to NA, um, like Perks, Afari, but I don't think it's enough, to be honest. Um, just because, I mean, you just you just uh, realize that, like, even myself, I came back to EU. I've been playing solo queue for, like, a month straight now. Um, and I feel like my mechanics are already getting better, right? Uh, uh, just in NA, the, like, as you could see, like, the, the like in spring, we're the best team and, like, we were not even that good, right? And it was hard for us to improve. Like we had to go out of our ways to like improve ourselves, which in EU, if you're good, then like just look at you too, right? If you're insane, then people just look up to you and then they like try shit to beat you, right? Yeah. Um, where in NA, it's like people still play their way. And then if you roll them down, then sad, you know? Um, I think the only teams that have potential to do something international or just good or do or just teams that have really good individuals. Um, I think this year, C9 and TL have actually a chance just because all five players are actually really good. Um, and then of course, it depends on like how they match, stuff like that. But like on paper, they're insane, uh, if I may say. But of course, with NA ping, um, with the quality of solo queue, with uh, the quality of scrims, if I, like what happened to us this year, it's, it's hard to say, but I believe there's hope. Um, but it's not going to be easy for sure. Uh, I think people have to actually maybe want to play in houses, stuff like that, uh, which is something I tried to do um, back in NA, but uh, people just kind of give up fast. Uh, so it was hard to to improve stuff, yeah. And that's just how it is, as sad as it sounds, you know. Yeah. Um, EU is just, at least for me, I know that improving as a player and as a team is way easier uh, to do in EU than uh, than in NA, so. 
Do you have much hope for these amateur players or a lot of the names that are you're coming in uh, that are coming in? Because uh, I'm excited about it, but I I'm also just like, wow, we are really throwing out like half our players. So, uh, do you think that that's a good thing? Is it too many players that are being thrown out? Or are there really great players that should have homes still that you're surprised are not competing this year? Uh, you mean uh, you mean uh, you mean in like, LCS. Uh, like oh, uh, in, um, in all these amateur players are coming in, right? Like you've got entire mm -hmm. teams of players like that have me, never competed like, uh, in LCS before. Yeah. Um, I think it's good. I think some players were like overused. If I like not overused, but like they were there for too long. Um, where you could probably just get a rookie that could be as good in like a year or a year and a half, right? Um. I think it's good to give any any talent a chance, just because, for example, the two people that comes to my mind are um, Johnson and Tactical. Like I knew that they were good already, right? I mean, you can see it when a player is good in Solo queue. Um, like for example, people like TL, for example, is an insane team right now. And I mean, their AD is like is like a young rookie. I mean, not necessarily a young rookie anymore, but he was right last yeah. year. Um, so I think people. Investing in NA talent is a good thing, in my opinion, and it will it will help for sure in the future. Um, also, there are so many veteran players that can actually help them grow as well. Where, for example, Golden Glue just went to coaching, um, or like uh, I'm not sure what like uh, what Darshan is gonna do, but uh, th like these people actually have like I think at least a good way of um, improving the this region just by teaching the rookies on how to play the game. <laughs> Just because they're like their mechanics are not bad, you know. Yeah. Like nah, the people I think of like, are like Niles, um, Revenge. Like these people are good in solo queue. It's just it doesn't work in team. Just because you know the coach that can help them, uh, they need to know how to play uh, in a team. So, um, I I really hope it works out um, for these rookies because yeah, it's been a long time where only one or two rookies have been outstanding lately. Like this yeah. year, I think it was probably like Speaker, right? Uh, and Johnson, I guess, and Tactical, so. Yeah, people said FBI, but I guess he'd been around Oh, yeah, for FBI. A bit. Yeah. Yeah, FBI is also really good. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see rookies. I think it's it's a good thing, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, hey, um, is there anything you want to say here about your time in NA or any, any message to the NA fans? Because I think, you know, I really enjoyed having you over here. I'm sad that you are, are going. I'm happy that you're going to be on Fnatic, and I hope you guys can can contest G2 and have a good time over there, but uh, definitely a, a great player to interview over the past couple of years. So I, I appreciate your time here, but anything you want to say to anybody as you, uh, you move on to the LEC? Um, I will follow uh, LCS closely for sure. I will not forget the, the support I got, the people I've met, um, all the friends I made as well there. It's something that, that was kind of easy to integrate, I guess. Um, I don't know, like Dom and like uh, all those people, even like closer actually that's now there because I will talk to him probably every day still to see how he does in 100 Thieves. Um, but yeah, I'll stay connected with the scene for sure. Uh, I will not like just go to EU and kind of forget NA, right? Because um, I was there for so long. So yeah, I hope people who still support me here in LLC, which uh, I believe they will. To be honest, because I've got so many messages of like CNN fans or like even other uh, just NA fans, um, which is really nice. So, yeah, I will, I will, um, I will look at LCS games for sure, and I will probably like even like co-stream them or something with Dom or like uh, other people. But yeah, I will not, uh, I will not just forget you guys for sure. Nice. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. I can't, I can't wait till you say. In this interview, all these rookies are great, and then on a co stream, you're just hard flaming all of them. And you're like, I'm so glad <laughs> no, I'm not I here anymore. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Disky, for the interview. Really appreciate you taking the time. And uh, as always, hopefully, I get to interview you at some international event after COVID is done and, you know, Fnatic is popping off. I'd love, to, I'd love that. So best of luck over yeah, in LEC. Sure. Thank you very much. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, it's the holidays. That's my best Santa impression. But regardless of what holiday you are a fan of or celebrate, or maybe you don't celebrate any holidays, but other people in your life do, you should consider checking out Alienware.com slash Travis. There's a link in the video description below because they've got uh, amazing products that you can gift to a family member or a significant other or a friend or yourself. 
they make great gifts is what I'm getting at. And they also make great personal gifts for yourself uh, to have because maybe there's just nobody in your life anymore. Uh, they've retired from competitive play and now just want to play World of Warcraft and they aren't interested in spending time with you. Regardless, you can check out great stuff at alienware.com slash Travis and use Travis10off Q4 to save 10% off your order.